Our Father God, Lord, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, from whom we have salvation. And then, Lord, I thank you that I had a wife that loved you, always prayed to you, Father, even when she was sick. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. We're going to do a little thing about marriage today. And, uh, you know, I remember uh, Carol was 15 years old when I met her. And uh, she was 78 when she passed and went home to be with the Lord. I miss that girl, and I'll, I'll tell you uh, how we met. And uh, I saw her at church, and it used to be, and I know I'm repeating this, some of you, uh, uh, they call it going steady. They go for a week or two, and then they break up, and they would cry, and the girls would cry, and all this stuff. And, so the first words I spoke to Carol was, Carol, would you like to go steady with me? And we laughed. <laughs> and uh, we didn't know that that was it. You know, we were together from then on. And uh, 59 years, we were married. 63, we were together. And uh, I, I sent, uh, Pastor Brown gave me a bunch of these uh, from brochures from Carol's home get going, and I sent one off to uh, her uncle by marriage, and uh, him and his wife were married for 73 years, and she died at 96, wow. and so uh, I, I, I was talking to them the other day, whether it's 63 that I knew Carol, or 73 that he was married, or 103, it's never enough. You know, you always wonder. And, uh, you know, I, I still do things and I expect Carol to, uh, I'll turn to the empty spot on the couch and uh, expect her to answer. And so, when you call me on my house phone, uh, we have so many of these phony calls, but I don't recognize the number, I, I apologize. Uh, but if I don't recognize the number, I don't answer it. Yes. And uh, so it's only the numbers that I recognize. If you'll turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Let's see if I can get my glasses of those. All right. Genesis chapter 1, and uh, it says here, okay, yeah, I got it. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto me, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and to do it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You know, one of the verses is, is in Genesis uh, 2.24. Uh, it was my favorite verse that Carol and I used to quote a lot. And it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. You know, the, the problem with marriage today is if it doesn't work out, you have a little problem, you divorce. You know, uh, sometimes Carol drove me crazy, and sometimes I drove her crazy, but we never thought about divorce, you know, 
it was always uh, in the back, uh, way back in our mind. And Genesis 2.24 is the key verse that we're going to look at today. And it says, let me repeat that. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. You know, I have uh, six granddaughters, and uh, one of them was a little spoiled. And, uh, you know, she was dating a guy, or living with a guy, and, uh, you know, I pray for her salvation all the time. And the other five are great Christians. And, uh, you know, I, I think when you leave your mother and father, the, the verse says there, leave your mother and father. They don't rule you. And this young man, uh, the, he was a mama's boy. And whatever his mother said went, not what his what, uh, wife said or uh, girlfriend. And so, when we leave our mother and father, it doesn't mean we neglect them. We still take care of them. You know, uh, Carol, when her mother and father had a problem, we took care of it. When my mother and father had a problem, we took care of it. You know, and so, but what it means is you don't take it live that uh, life for your mother. You don't become a mama's boy. You turn to your wife. And so uh, that that's a very good verse that you can remember and always have in your back of your mind. Okay, page six. Oh. Page 696, Malachi. Okay, let me see if I can find it. The lighting's not too good up here, but we'll find it. Okay. Okay, that's better. And Malachi 2.14. Last book in the Old Testament. <laughs> no, Revelation. Oh, uh, Old uh, Testament. Oh, Ecclesiastics. I goofed up right here. Okay. Ecclesiastics chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. And it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up its fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls, for he has not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? You know, I roll over in bed sometimes and I reach for Carol, you know, and she's not there. And I forget. If we were together so long that it becomes uh, a habit that we do. And so, let's turn to Malachi, uh, let's see, Malachi 9.79 in my Bible. Okay. Chapter 2. And verse 14 and 15. Yet ye say, why? Because the Lord has been witness between the wife of thy youth and against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. treacherously. Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. See, oh, okay, in verse 15. And did not make, did he not make one, yet had he the residue of the Spirit. And why one 
that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit. Let none deal treacherously against the wife of a Jew. You know, too many people nowadays don't take marriage seriously. God ordained marriage. And like I said, you leave your mother and father. You don't become a mama's boy, but you also uh, need to treat them good and then treat your wife even better. Okay, let's turn to uh, page 1277. Okay, that's Ephesians, whoops, I got one by it. Okay, Ephesians 5.25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You know, uh, that, that is a good verse to remember. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. You know, you won't have a good night's sleep if you're mad at your wife or mad at your husband. And so, uh, we need to look at that verse. And then husbands, verse, uh, chapter 5, in Ephesians, verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You know, he gave his very life for the church. And we can do, I know, uh, I know Carol would have given her life for mine, and I would do the same for her. You know, that we have learned to love one another. And then Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. I mean, chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in song, in hymn, and spiritual song, singing with the grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do, you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Wives submit, verse 18, Wives submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. You know, that, that is, uh, like I said, before, uh, you don't go to bed angry because you won't have a night, good night's sleep. And uh, let's see if I can get this open. Okay. You won't have a good night's sleep. And, you know, I have to apologize to people that have lost their husband or wife, I wasn't, I didn't realize how much it hurts. You know, last night I sat there, uh, yesterday was the first day that I was all alone and uh, nobody came over. And I got very depressed and I would hear Carol's voice, not literally, but I would hear her I know what she would say about seeing certain things that I did. 
and uh, I would then uh, You know, I went and told uh, the, the woman that does her hair uh, that she had passed away. And she knew this woman from our youth at uh, Calvary Baptist Church. And my son knew this woman. And she owns this hair cutting place. And she said, my one granddaughter called and told, that, told her that my wife had passed away. And, you know, I, I still remember when my daughter passed away. Uh, a friend of mine came up and he said, I don't know what to say. And I said, you just said the best thing. Yes. Because there's no words no. that can describe a loss. And, uh, you know, my wife never got over losing a daughter. No. Five years went by. And, you know, uh, the dialysis, I remember going to, and my wife saying to the doctor or our family doctor uh, when she first found out she was going to be on dialysis, she said, how long do I have to live? And the woman said, five years. And it was just about five years. Because uh, my granddaughter works at St. Joe, and doctors come up to her because she has a sense that she can just see when people have had a stroke. And she said, Grandma lived a longer than I thought she would because dialysis is very hard on the body. And uh, uh, I had a nephew that passed around who uh, that just gave up on it after a couple weeks uh, or a couple months. And he just couldn't take it anymore. And Carol used to feel that way. And the only way I kept her going was the reminder that the grandchildren needed you know, but when she fell on the floor, we don't know if she passed out or what, and the ambulance took her to the hospital. I didn't know that would be the last time I would be able to speak to her. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, I wish I had said more to her, but then you always wish that. Always. Okay. First uh, Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1 through 13. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not loved, I become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love envious not. Love vaulteth not itself is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not its own, and is, and is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. You know, Carol and I had to endure for being on uh, dialysis. And like I said, she got tired of it, and I would remind her that the grandkids needed her. Yes. Love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall be done away. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. 
whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. When as a child I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away child's things. For now we see in a mirror darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am known. And now abide in faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. You know, I never once in all the marriage life thought that Carol didn't love me. In fact, I thought she loved me more than I loved her. And uh, we used to say, she said, I love you more. And I said, I know it. You know, and uh, it was just easy to be that way. So, uh, let's see. Song of Solomon. Okay. All right, just got a message on my phone. Okay, Song of Solomon on 4 9. Thou ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thy eyes, with one chain of thy neck. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How much better is thy love than wine and the fragrance of the ointment all. Thy lips, my, oh my spouse, drop like the honeycomb, honey and are under thy tongue, and the scent of thy garments like the fragrance of Lebanon. You know, uh, oh, when I went in to tell the lady yesterday, I started to cry, you know, and I haven't had that hard cry yet. Okay, let's turn to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was in this way. When his mother Mary was the spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which be interpreted as God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took on to him his wife. And then, this is the verse, something, some religions will say, oh, she was a virgin all the time. It says, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, 
and call his name Jesus. Joseph, Mary was a virgin when she, Joseph took her as his wife, and he said he knew not her until she brought forth her firstborn son, and his name was Jesus. You know, that, that is the greatest thing that we could have. You know, I, I don't know that I could take uh, a woman that said she was a virgin and yet she was pregnant. You know, it would be beyond me. But Joseph believed God. And like you said, he did not know Mary until after Jesus was born. And, you know, like some religion call it the Virgin Mary. So she had other sons. And, uh, you know, the Bible tells about that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you that Carol and I had those years together. Yes. Amen. And I wish they had been more, but you chose to end them. Yes. And take her home. And then now she's with her daughter, her mother, yes. and her aunt that she loves so much. And we thank you for thank that, you, Lord. Lord. I miss her. We all miss her. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you, Father. Amen. Amen.